You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello then viewers, welcome back to our Ice Career Mode series with me, Bromo18, as always. It is episode 45 we are on now, and we are going to resume our progress in the third season. If you yet to watch any of the previous episodes, go and watch those ones back before you come on to this one. I cannot emphasize that enough. But, having said that, if you're ready to go, then let us continue. So last episode, it was quite a big one in terms of transfers. We seemed a couple of games, qualified for the Champions League group stages, and also a lot of incomings. Uh, and outgoings, most notably Frankie de Jong for a world record fee as of this transfer window, 92.3 million to Arsenal of the Premier League. Gutted to see him go, but we had to let him go for that price. We could not turn it down. Um, we made a couple of signings, and you know what, just to jog your memory, we'll go and, go and have a look at those ones now. Um, these were the four we made. Made Hakimi, of course, and Sherpen were in a previous episode. But the most recent one, we signed Owen Vindal and Sepp van den Berg. Now, um, we are still on the lookout. And as you will have noticed, we've had, an, a, we've had, well, we've had a bid agreed for Stefan El Shirawi. If I can get to it here. 16.5 million. As you can see, he's valued at 20.5. But we can get him for 16.5. They have accepted... And we now just have to start negotiating with him on personal terms. Now, the reason I haven't started that yet is because I'm not sure whether or not to go with this. This guy is a really good player, 82 rated for 16.5 million. We can, um, <laughs> like, that would be a brilliant deal. His stats are really good. He'd fit well into our, our system. But it's just something um, that's making me think, do we go ahead of it or not? So, um, I'm going to have play the game first and I'm going to think about it give me enough time to think about whether or not we are going to do this um, and then we'll see how it goes but that would be a, a really good signing we've got other options to Heath Chong on loan could be one if they could if they would uh, accept it we could also go for uh, Dilrosson of uh, for Berlin although it's much more of a risk because we don't know exactly what his rating is and therefore what his value is so um, yeah that's a it's a tough one and we're going to see how it goes. But it's certainly one um, that, that is not to be frowned at. That would be a fantastic signing if we do go through with it. Uh, but we do have the Groningen game to think of first. And we are going to play that. We're probably going to sim other games. Maybe the Zwolle game as well. Don't think we'll do the Schalke in this episode. I think I would like to start that one if possible. But we're going to see how it goes anyway. Um, so we move on to this Groningen game. So far in the league, it's three wins out of three. We've simmed only one of those games, so um, it's good going so far, and we can make it 12 points out of a possible 12 today with a win against Groningen. In fact, if I have a look at the league table, we'll see. They've had an average start, one win, one draw, and one loss um, in the first three games. So uh, we're going to see how, how this one plays out. On to the team. And this is the lineup we've gone with. Onana in goal. Fossi Mensah and Van Jongle in at the back. Owen Vindal will make his debut today, starting at left back with Akraf Hakimi, a right back. Looking forward to seeing what he can do. Mike Peters at holding midfielder um, with Hakim Ziyech and Dujan Tadic playing just further ahead. And Onana, Danjuma Gruneveld, David Neres, and of course, Marun Bawadu up top. There's the bench for you. Vandenberg makes the bench this time, waiting to see. If he'll make his uh, his debut, looking forward to seeing what he can do at just 18 years old. He's going to be a real good asset to the squad and a good addition. I uh, I firmly believe that. But yeah, this is it. Then. Not too much to talk about, and this time, um, other than let's begin the game against Groningen. Alan Smith alongside me, Martin Tyler, and a big welcome to you to this match. Match today is Ajax against Groningen. It's Ajax we'll be looking at with some detail, I feel, today. Full marks to the players because they've concentrated right from the very off in this season. I know there's still a long way to go, but uh, we all expected them to be champions, and they're looking like that in these early stages. 
And Ajax are going to line up like this. Dusan Tadic starts. He was man of the match last time out. And the last player on the team sheet is the one main forward. Off we go then. Let's make it four wins out of four. Neres. Boss Boadu has gone on the run here. And Boadu's in. Oh, it's saved on the rebound though. Saved again. Brilliant again from the goalkeeper. And Boadu's going to be disappointed that he couldn't make more of that. It's good build-up play. And finally, we carved them open somehow. Looking for teammates in the middle. Could be in trouble here after that earlier card. He's already been booked once. Could he get another one here? He can, that's it, he's off. Well, that's sort of out of the blue. Um, it's all over the place, really. I can't, I, that's not a booking, in my opinion. We, we saw this, and I'm recording this shortly after the playoff games, and if anyone watched them, we saw Dwight Gale get a second booking for something similar where he tapped across, you know, sort of touches a goalkeeper. I, I don't think that's a foul, in my opinion, and certainly not a booking. Nazareth gets sent off and uh, Groningen now down to 10 men. The crowd Mike Peters to whip it in here. Van Drongel in the target on the header. Straight at the goalkeeper. Perhaps should work him better there. Peters has options and he'll go to Boadu. Can try and quickly turn on the spot. He's still got the ball, Boadu. He'll whip it in. Tadic is there. Save from the keeper yet again. And that's on the brink of half time. The keeper's kept grinning and in this game. He's made a few decent saves. And we've uh, finally managed to work him a little bit more despite some weedy efforts. And as it goes into half time, it's nil nil. But perhaps we should be disappointed that we haven't um, taken the lead here. Because, you know, especially with them being down to 10 men, we've got a massive advantage as well as the chances we've had. And uh, we haven't made it count so far. Look at that 63% possession. Eight shots, all of them on target, but and we haven't allowed them to have a shot either. But um, we're just not capitalising. We need to see a little bit more quality with the finishing in the final third. Second half is up next. And now we're going to make a couple of subs here. We've uh, we've really fell off in the second half. We can bring on Tyne Coat Miners and swap those two around. Um, so the Coat Miners are more boxer box man. We're also going to take off Bawadu and bring on Yusuf Paulson as well. And um, and Grunewald just hasn't had it today, I'm afraid. He's, uh, he's played quite poorly, so we're going to bring on Bande. A triple substitution to try and affect the game. Will it be enough to work? We're going to find out. Substitution. Paulson lays it out wide to Neres. Neres onto his left, back onto his right. He's got a defender in his back pocket all day. He's going to whip it in. Comes out to Vindel on the edge of the box. So Vindel lays it off to Ziyech. Ziyech will come onto his right. It's a weedy effort. We're starting to panic a bit now. Countdown is to ten minutes left. Paulson, he's got Neres. It's a great ball now. And Neres, could he be in here? Not quite. But he's got options running into the box. He'll try and whip it in. Still got it. Ziyech to Paulson. There's the goal. 83 minutes gone. And Yusuf Paulson is the difference maker. It's been coming, but I was starting to worry that it wouldn't quite happen. We could not open the doors. And we'd really dropped off in the second half. But finally, after some more pressure and some more possession, Neres gets a little bit of luck with the bounce back to him. But he finds Ziyech, nevertheless. He can lay it off to Paulson, who first time slots it into that opposing corner. Keeper, who has kept out many, many efforts this game, cannot keep that one out. And off the bench, Paulson is potentially the hero. Finally, we have broken the deadlock. One well now. And we've worked that ball at the field well. And we've got another opportunity now. Neres running in. He's got the pace on the defender, surely. He'll go for goal. Saved. Bande's in on the rebound. Ah, that's a poor effort. Could have sealed the game there and then. Well, we've had some chances. Good control indeed. Bande, Paulson. He's got Comaners overlapping and he'll use him. And Comaners will try and come back inside. That's got to be a peno. Yes, it is. Penalty. Comaners is brought down. Silly from the defender. Didn't need to make that challenge. And we've got a chance now to uh, seal the game here. 
as the 90th minute approaches. Let's have a look, see who our best penalty taker is. It's ZX, so we're going to let him take it. Get the target on. We're going to try and aim for the top corner. He doesn't go there, but it is a goal nevertheless. And Hakim Ziyech has got himself onto the score sheet. 2-0 now to Ajax. And the three points are making their way back to the defending champions. It's been a good performance in the end, despite a little bit of anxiety in the second half. But we've rounded it off now. And uh, we will get the win. Restarting at 2-0. Good, strong tackle. There it is then, guys, full-time. And we've got those three points, all important. That's the most, um, that is the most vital thing, as I say. The performance was very good as well. But, of course, uh, there is uh, plenty, to be, uh, plenty to be worked on there. I can feel a little bit fortunate that they went down to 10 men. You know, I disagree with that sending off absolutely just 100%. Um, and I think that sort of played into our hands, although... Beforehand, they weren't really um, testing us at all either, to be honest. So, um, so in the end, a thoroughly deserved win. And we now move on to transfer deadline day. Welcome back then, everyone. Deadline day has now begun. And already there's big moves. For one, Ravel Morrison goes to Sassuolo. 13.5 million we get for him. Really pleased with that deal. Stefan El Sharawi has informed me that he's looking forward to negotiations. I think I have decided on that, but I'll let you know shortly. Um, also, an offer for David Neres from Napoli. Now, they've just sold Dries Mertens. So, um, you know, they are looking for a replacement. And again, we're going to look for uh, we're gonna look for big money. We'll ask for 64 million. And I think that's fair, to be honest. We're going to see how this one goes. Um, and I need to decide on this Al Sharawi deal as well. Because if not, we need to go somewhere else. I've got a contingency for that one. But uh, we'll see. We're going to see how that one goes. There it is then, guys. The move is sealed. Stefan El Shirawi joins Ajax. Uh, four and a half year deal, essentially. Well, five year deal, really. 16.5 million, £42,000 per week, which I can just about, you know, be satisfied with as an 82 rated. At, you know, I think that's okay. Um, what a player. He's a really good player. Someone I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of. And uh, I think we've done really well to get him in, especially... Uh, with his value being 20.5 to get him for 16.5 delighted with that so um yeah really excited and i think we solved our winger problem although should neres leave to napoli we may have may have another hole to fill so we'll see how that one goes welcome back guys broken down negotiations for david neres they uh don't want to pay the price we are asking for therefore at the moment he will stay but still seven hours remaining so uh watch his space there's still time for uh for things to happen yet so welcome back guys, first of all, uh, some news to tell you about, we've had an offer for Tali Fico from Leicester, we've asked for the same amount that we were asking for previously, which was around 34 million, so uh, we'll see if they offer that or not, not expecting them to, but um, it's a fair price in my opinion, so they better pay it if they want him. Um, elsewhere, sent offers, we've made a loan for loan move for Tahith Chong from Manchester United as well, I just want to try and flesh out those areas on the wing really, um, you know, still... Still feeling we're a little bit lacking in, in just advanced positions in general. We can also move a couple of wingers like Neres and, um, and Grodeveld into Cam as well, should we need to. Um, so I feel just, just bring him in for a year loan. 50% of his wages will pay if he if he accepts. So uh, we'll see how that one goes as well. Welcome back, everyone. Turns out Chung has rejected the move to loan to our club. So, um, you know, screw him. Um, never mind. And also, we've had a loan offer for Mike Voss from Huddersfield. As I say, he will be, you know, getting much more chances this season. So we're not looking to loan him out. Um, elsewhere, we might be done and dusted on deadline day. To be honest, I'm not expecting much more moves. Would have liked to loan in Chong, but um, it ain't going to happen. So don't really want to go out and buy anyone um, as a winger. Loan would have been more preferable. So we'll see how see how it goes. Welcome back, guys. Um, some more. News for you, late on in deadline day now, Tali Fico, move broke down, they didn't want to pay the 34 million, so he will stay. We've also had an offer for Dujan Tadic from Everton. Um, don't really see the need to sell him, to be honest, especially this late into deadline day. We wouldn't be able to find a replacement, wouldn't have the time, so um, we're going to reject it, to be honest. 
not interested in uh, in selling him so he'll remain at the club as well and um, on that note we are in the final hour so that means it's it deadline day is done successful transfer window for us i'm really pleased with how it went let's have a let's have a quick roundup for uh, successful completed offers we brought in five players hakimi uh kiel sherpen uh, owen vindal sep vandenberg and stefan el sharawi a good transfer window in the end for us really pleased with the players that we brought in i think um you know on top of um on top of the fact that we, we're carrying on our philosophy, we brought in some quality as well, and I'm really pleased with that. In terms of received offers for transfers, I might have to go elsewhere um, for this, but we've loaned out plenty of players, uh, which is um, which is good for sure because otherwise they'll be they'll be at the club and um, you know not getting much game time elsewhere. Sold Ravel Morrison and Frankie Diong, Benjamin Van Leer, um, Zakari Labiad, you know players who. Well, apart from Frank and Diong, players who, who weren't really going to get a look in and we got some good fees for them. Of course, we lost Diong and that is a massive blow, uh, but we've made some big money on him. And I think with the replacements we've got available, we should be fine. And don't forget, you know, we've got Callum Iting, uh out on loan as well. So um, if we do struggle in that position, we can recall him uh, because, um, you know, you can do that in this game. So, yeah, overall, really pleased. Just checking here, it looks like we've got a training injury. Fosu meant to out for three weeks, which is a disappointment. He will miss a couple of games. Loan offer for Voss, again, rejected. Don't know why you'd you'd, you'd offer at this point of the uh, season anyway. Um, and a, a youth squad monthly report. Let's have a quick look here, see if anyone is uh, pulling any more strings. Uh, Mad Svensson looks good. In fact, he could be very close to getting a promotion to the uh, to the senior squad indeed. He's um, He's looking very good going to keep our eye on him elsewhere they're all all looking good mike dykstra as well a um, little bit more time yet to uh to grow in the youth academy but he could be one to, to keep an eye on as well so it's looking great guys gotta say i'm really optimistic for this season i'm extremely looking forward to it i think it's going to be a very very good one um just thinking towards the next game we might actually leave the swallow game out actually um maybe we have that in the next episode we'll sim that one play Schalke, play Vitesse, thinking of other types of structure to do as well. So we're going to see um, just how that one goes. But I think we are going to leave it um, there, actually, guys. So if you have enjoyed this episode, then do make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter using the Twitter handle at Bromo018. The link for that, as always, is in the description. And on that note, I'm Bromo18. And I will see you soon. <laughs>